more and more lately I'm hearing from content creators, people on Twitter, and people in our community that the survivor role is becoming a really difficult role to enjoy playing in DBD. If not for the perks that killers are bringing, like Eruption, or Brian and Overcharge, or all three, then it's the strategies like tunneling and camping to get some person out of the match as soon as possible, almost guaranteeing a win almost every time if you can pull it off. And I think that there's a lot to be said about how oppressive the role has become. While Survivor does have brand new solo queue buffs, those solo queue buffs aren't necessarily turning the entire tide of the match, especially because it doesn't help you to do anything against tunneling and camping. So today I wanted to have a candid, honest discussion about tunneling and camping, about what can be done about it potentially, and maybe what we as a community can do to help speed things up a little bit. So I think to go ahead and dive in and talk about this, I think we all need to be on the same page as to what tunneling and camping truly is. And so I want to talk about my sort of definitions of this. Um, as somebody who's put a lot of time into the game, your definition might not line up with mine, but I would encourage you to try to maybe stretch your definition or understand where I'm coming from. Because especially if you are newer, your sort of understanding of everything surrounding this game might be a little bit narrower. So with regards to tunneling, right? Tunneling is a very intentional um, tunnel vision. That's why it's it's tunneling is tunnel vision on a single target, a single survivor, right? So they hook somebody and then they walk off. Maybe that person gets unhooked and they come right back to the hook and they find that one target, that one person. Um, so I think that that has to be pretty intentional. If they're in a chase already, then they leave that chase and they come back, right? There are things that are not tunneling though, right? If I hook you and then I hook somebody else and then I come back to you because you're, you know, on the gen that you were on before and you're predictable, then I, that's not really tunneling. That's just you being in a bad spot, right? At that point, then I could tunnel two or three people at once. Just that's not really how it works, right? I am quite literally just playing the game. Um, simultaneously, you know, if I hook you and then I'm chasing somebody else and I chase them, they're a great looper. I chase them for 35, 40 seconds. I break a pallet, maybe two pallets. I'm like, okay, I need to get back to kind of looking for somebody else, right? I need to, I can't just stay in this chase all game. And I happen to find you again. That's not really tunneling. That's unfortunate and it, it can sometimes suck, but it's not necessarily tunneling. And I think we need to kind of understand that, uh, you know, if I'm in chase, I've been in chase for a while, you've been able to get healed. And I'm like, okay, I got to break away from this chase. And then I'm patrolling gens and I stumble upon you. I've stumbled upon you. And that's all that is, right? So I think a consorted, intentional, repetitious effort needs to be made from that killer to find you over and over again through your built-in borrowed time, through your D-strike, through your whatever, and put you back on that hook, right? Now with camping, camping is pretty similar. It is a very intentional consorted effort. There are two types of camping and that's face camping and proxy camping. Face camping is pretty self-explanatory. Face camping is right in your face, it's right there. Um, proxy camping is when somebody is stepped away from that hook a little bit further. Maybe they're patrolling an area. If they have you hooked in a corner, maybe they're patrolling that corner and just waiting for somebody to sort of run in, um, sort of stuff like that. So obviously that that exists there are things outside of that though right if, if a if a killer uh hooks you and then they are placing traps say it's a hag say it's a trapper that's not really camping they're just setting up right that that's their ability i don't um simultaneously if you're hooked near or between two different gens if a killer hooks you and then walks to a gen and maybe checks it out is anyone here hello kicks and then they walk away. They walk to the other gen and they maybe walk in front of your hook while walking to the other gen. And then they check that or kick that. And then they walk away. None of that was camping. That was them securing that area. Uh, simultaneously, there's a lot of times where a killer might hook you and then see faded scratch marks nearby. You as a survivor cannot see those. And unless you're in comms, you may not know that a survivor is nearby. So to you, it may look like camping, but that killer may be looking for somebody as well. So let's be sure that we're not just calling things things that they are not. So diving into tunneling and camping, I think if we're going to talk about solutions, we have to talk about why people tunnel and camp. I am really firmly in this place of when new players start the game, it's logical to tunnel and camp, right? When a new player hops into the game and they hook somebody and that person gets unhooked and they go, hmm, well, I guess I'm supposed to win this game. So logically, I should just go after the thing that'll make this game more winnable faster, right? 
So somebody gets unhooked and you just go for them again. You're not really thinking about etiquette. You're not really even trying to be mean. You just, that is the direct path to a victory. That's why we play multiplayer games online for the most part. I mean, as the killer role, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to try to get a W. No malice or, uh, you know, sort of ill intent involved. And I think the same can be said about camping. I think with camping, it's like, okay, you know, when, when you hook somebody, especially... I've played on my PlayStation 5 account recently, and sometimes I hook somebody, and their survivor is just right next to the hook. They unhook before I can step away, and it's wild. And so I think a lot of the times, killers end up sort of tricking themselves into camping hooks because that's how you draw the survivors out. Why should I go look for them when it's, they swarm the dang thing? And then for a while, that works, and it works, and then it works, and then... Um, there are some problems after that, right? So I think at the end of the day, I think new players really gravitate towards these strategies just because they seem logical, right? Because they, they, it makes sense because it's the path of least resistance, right? Um, and, and at the end of the day, I don't think there's a lot of malice initially, right? Now, what I think happens with tunneling and with camping is that I think a lot of killer players um, get away with this. Their MMR raises and it goes up and it goes up. They get 3Ks, 4Ks over and over and over. And then eventually I think they hit a ceiling where they can't even get a down. They overchase somebody and three gens pop and they are super frustrated. So if they down that person, they face camp that person and three people escape. And I think what happens is because that that's how they were sort of raised in the game, right? Because that logical, that this makes sense, this makes sense. They never really hone those chase skills, the ability to find people or anything like that. They end up frustrated because now it seems like survivors are just simply overpowered and now they are resorting to camping and tunneling and i think that that's kind of the loop in the cycle i think so much of camping and tunneling is natural to a point and then born out of frustration at another point and i think that's why we see eruption and brine and all these other things i don't think the game naturally pushes you to go find other people or gives you the tools to find other people patch 6.1.0 gave a lot of killers the ability to um, catch up a little bit faster and chase and break pallets a little bit faster do these really small nuanced things with a lot more success but unfortunately that's not enough of a deterrent to really turn the tide of camping and tunneling being the strat and realistically, look, if, if a killer gets somebody on a hook at five gens, let's be honest with ourselves, it takes 120 seconds for that survivor to be totally camped out, sometimes shorter if they opt to leave or try to Kobe. And so what happens is once one person's gone at five gens, well, that's it. That's game for a lot of the matches. And so I think that path of least resistance is also problematic in that sort of sense. I have spent a lot of time trying to teach the game, make tutorials, and even do boot camps to try to help people to understand the game in a level that they couldn't before. And I think one thing I'm noticing is that sort of that barrier, the efficiency, the metagame, the keeping track of four survivors, three health states, seven gens, all the hooks, where people could be, that sort of cerebral process of mapping out the game in your head. I think people really struggle with that and it's easier to just go with what you can see. And I don't know that there's an easy fix for that necessarily, but I think there are ways to fix people to try to learn that sort of 4D chess that's happening in a game of DVD. I think a lot of people are also going to ask, why is camping and tunneling a problem? Why are we even having this conversation? It seems kind of like a waste of breath. I think looking at the killer stats that Behavior has released, showing that most matches end in nearly a 3K, that's on average matches end with a, a 2 to 3K, usually skewing pretty close to a 3K. I think that we have to look at why that is. Behavior isn't tracking hook states, how many times somebody got hooked or anything of that nature. They're just tracking kills. And with the current perk meta, I'm sure that actual, you know, 2 to 3k is skewing far closer to a 3k as the meta has caught on. But again, we have no indicator as to how these kills are taking place or how many hooks are, hap are happening on average or anything of that nature. So how can we know really how healthy perks are or how healthy the maps are in this game when kill data is the only thing we have to, to go off of? I think that there is a problem with regards to stats, but I think there is a problem with regards to how we get these stats. And realistically, if we're going to look at how good or bad a role is, how strong a map is, how weak a this or that is, I think we need to look 
look at these strategies. If we're gonna talk about balance, we have to consider and acknowledge the fact that tunneling and camping are issues. Now, I know a lot of killer players are gonna think that I'm committing some sort of treasonous act by talking about this, but realistically, I'm not entirely sure that we are ready to have this conversation as a community looking at it a lot of people are going to say well i'm playing the killer role i'm going to play how i want and that's fine but if you're going to do that then you should acknowledge that other people are going to play how they want you don't get to complain when all the gens are gone and you never hooked anybody you don't get to complain that perks are busted when you're using the meta and camping and tunneling at that point it's a free-for-all if we want to really start stepping into the arena and having actual conversations we have to be willing to acknowledge that both sides have problems and then we can talk about them honestly and earnestly because if we like the game if we want the game to continue to be healthy we need to show up as our best selves so we need to talk about camping and tunneling. We need to talk about these as endemic issues. What can we do to prevent camping and tunneling and prevent four man slugging? All right, somebody asked me the other day, hey, where, how do I find my slugs? They keep all getting away. And they showed a screenshot of four people slugged. And I said, stop doing that. First of all, that's not gonna work at a higher MMR, but two, it's, what are you doing, right? So I think that there's things to talk about. now. Of course, there are things um, that we can slap on as perks. We have off the record, we have reassurance, we have all these perks that are gonna help uh, with regards to camping and tunneling, but I don't think perks are something that we should really be looking at with regards to camping and tunneling because they're just band-aids to a problem. They're just treating symptoms. And realistically, a lot of campers and tunnelers are gonna continue to push through those. So how do we try to dissuade camping and tunneling and four-man slugging? So for four man slugging, I think the biggest thing we can do is base kit unbreakable. I actually quite enjoyed the base kit unbreakable that came in August of last year as a test in the PTB. PTBs are flawed. They don't have a high player population. So matchmaking is really, really wild. And you'll get new players with veteran players just to get people together. It is weird. So it's hard to test and see how well that was. And while I think the Mori system that came along with it was good while a little bit cheesy and I think all of it needed a little refinement, I think it was overall a great idea. Slugging for the 4K or slugging for people because you can and that's your easy victory, I don't think that that should be something that you are necessarily allowed to do. Not without repercussions. If you can down four people before their unbreakable base kit pops off, all right, cool. But at the end of the day, I think that base kit unbreakable is a great idea, especially because it was what, 45 seconds? 45 seconds is a lot. If you can't get someone else in 45 seconds, then maybe there's a chase efficiency issue happening here. So I think that that would be a good thing to prevent this sort of egregious slugging. I think tactical slugging makes sense. Downing someone and seeing that there's someone else right next to you and chasing them, downing them and hooking them. I think that makes sense. I think that's smart and I think that's okay. And I think that that just kind of keeps people tied up, but slugging four people, that's wild. So that's what I think with regards to that. Now. I, with camping, I've heard two things. Actually, shout out to LilyPie101 for this suggestion. Killers shouldn't be able to use their ability when they're within a certain proximity of the hook. Now, I've heard a variation of this, that is, the killer's hook timer progress shouldn't progress forward if the killer's near the hook. I think that that has too many roadblocks and barriers, and honestly, I think both of these have some problems. Right, if you hook somebody at shack and then you end up looping somebody near the shack and then the basement below, the timer just isn't moving. I think there's something strange there. So I, I'm not sure. Now you could say, well, if the killer's in chase, then the timer progresses. But well, then they can just sort of proxy camp and chase somebody in and then it doesn't really, it nullifies all of it. And the same thing with regards to killer abilities. I do understand that Bubba being able to chainsaw somebody and not even get a hook trade, but just straight up chainsaw people is a problem. And it feels like this suggestion really comes from that sort of perspective. I think Huntress and Trickster still pose a pretty interesting problem as they can stand eight to 12 meters back from a hook and still do their thing. The other thing there again is if you make that radius too wide again if survivors loop or are found near a hook They should be punished for being that close to the hook on unhook, right? If, if I hook you and you're six seven eight meters away immediately I don't know that you should necessarily get out of jail for free. That's wild misplay So it's really hard to figure out where the balance is there But I think removing the special ability within so many meters of a hook is interesting I do think it could increase proxy camping, which 
is not a bad idea. It People have to walk in to get an unhook. If you sprint burst or something like that, you could beat the killer there. There's interesting prospects. It's definitely not a perfect solution though. Now, with regards to tunneling, I think it's very complicated to try to stop tunneling. I don't know that you ever really can. And again, based on our definition in the early game, I think tunneling is complicated. I've heard the suggestion that removing bloodlust tiers beyond tier one makes sense. If you guys didn't know, bloodlust pops up when a killer chases for, I believe, 30 seconds. I could be wrong on that. I haven't checked that number in a long time. I don't feel like I ever use bloodlust. But if a killer chases without using their power for a duration of time, bloodlust will build up and proc up to tier 3, giving a huge speed bonus with each tier. Now, tier 1 makes sense in some cases, right? When survivors hold W and they just run and run and run, that bloodlust helps you get to that loop that they're getting to. Helps you kind of get up there and, and catch up a little bit. But at that point, if a killer breaks a pallet or uses their ability, it removes their bloodlust. But bloodlust tier 2 or tier 3 shouldn't be a thing. I don't think that a Wraith or a Legion or a Ghostface should just be able to loop around an unsafe pallet for 45 seconds and then get an easy down for it. Nor do I think that somebody who's tunneling someone else should be able to just speed boost their way into a tunnel. It doesn't fix the problem, but it definitely helps a little bit. If you're a strong enough looper as a survivor, it might help you to get away. But other than that, I'm not really sure what else can be done. Now, going to the killer education side of things and people camping out of frustration, my thoughts here are really that maybe base kit barbecue and chili could be a good thing. You hook somebody and then anyone outside of 40 meters is revealed to you. I don't think that that's a bad thing, and I think it intrinsically is being baked in, could encourage killers to leave and go do something else. Could they still come back and tunnel? Eh, yeah, they could. They definitely could. But maybe it stops the camping, and maybe it dissuades tunneling because they make so much distance to go get into a chase with somebody else that they're not there. But at the end of the day, none of this maybe stops camping and tunneling. It just dissuades it. Maybe that's the best we can do. I know this was a long rant, but ultimately, what do you guys think? Shout out to Lily for her well-articulated video. You guys should go check her out down in the description below. And of course, let me know in the comments. Keep it civil. We're going to have problems. And I'll be praying to the entity to see you guys in the next video.